everyone, this is Anne, and I'm checking in uh, after the first six days of June with just a quick little update to tell you guys what I've been working on and how things are going here for the Ivory Needle Challenge. So today is, no, Wednesday, Wednesday, June 7th. Um, we have really all of a sudden gotten summer here. It's been warm. Um, we've actually turned our air conditioner on. Um, interestingly though, for the first time, except for the very first year when we first moved to New Mexico, which is nine and a half years ago, the first summer we were here apparently was like the usual summers where it gets warm until about lunchtime and then the clouds start to come in and then there's rain and then it's cooler in the late afternoon. And so while it can get hot, a lot of days it doesn't stay hot all day. Uh, that has not been the case for the last eight summers that we've been here. It's just basically been hot. Um, not hot like Arizona. It's not 110 degrees here, so I am grateful for that. We are also, our house is at about 6,700 feet of elevation, so that does help. Um, but what has been really nice so far this summer is that almost every afternoon when it started to heat up, we've had some rainstorms. Not a ton of rain, but at this point we take everything we can get up here because the summer monsoons are an important uh, water addition for us. So fingers crossed it keeps doing that. I am delightfully happy anytime that the temperature wants to drop off of 85, 89 degrees and be cool. Uh, I'm, I'm your gal. Uh, not a hot weather person, so this has been it's been good. Um, so what I've been working on. <clears throat> um, I started a new little project for the Ivory Needle Challenge. The pattern is a free pattern which I will link to down below. Um, it's by the Primitive Hair. It's called Letha or the Summer Solstice. And I had both a start and a finish on this little guy. So I just stitched it up on a scrap of 28 count even weave that I had dyed for the shop in kind of that greeny brown color. It's just a nice neutral. And I used um, Gentle Arts threads instead of the Call For DMC. So if you're interested in my conversion, I used Grecian Gold, um, for the bee and the larger flower petals. I used raven for the black. I used picket fence for the little white uh, wings. I used corn husk for the lighter petals. And there's just a little bit of dark chocolate up here in the center of the sunflower. So really happy with this one. I think it's adorable. I love the little baby bees on it. How cute are those? And then I finished off the back with just a scrap of some kind of denim blue bee fabric, which I thought kind of, you know, went with the summer theme, blue summer skies and little bees. So that was my first start um, and finish for the uh, ivory needle challenge. So that one is in the books. I've got it out on our little, um, we have a sort of library table thing. I don't even know how to describe it. It's not exactly a buffet. Uh, it's tall and skinny and I use the top surface. We have some family photos out, added this to it. And I have a um, hand woven table runner on it as well, which uh, I wove back when I still had my loom. So that one is in the books, done and dusted. Uh, had a really fun time with it. We'll probably grab maybe one, maybe two or three others uh, of those smalls and make those up for other seasons and work on that as well next year. Um, so in conjunction with that, I thought it might be fun to share a couple of books that I have been reading 
these aren't a books that you read straight through. They're just books that you kind of use as yearly references, but which I've enjoyed. And if you're interested at all in the Celtic year, you might enjoy these as well. <clears throat> so the first one is The Celtic Spirit, which has the subtitle of Daily Meditations for the Turning Year. And the author is Caitlin Matthews. My dad got me this book a couple of years ago and I wind up flipping through it, maybe not daily, but fairly regularly throughout the year. And that's the nice thing about it. Um, each day has a specific topic, if you will. And so uh, they start out each day with a quick little quote up at the top, um, either from, let's say an old poem or even a newer poem and maybe some old sayings, uh, kind of folklore, little tidbits like that, that I think are kind of fun. And then there's sort of a two or three paragraph essay. Um, and then down at the bottom are two, three, four questions to think about as the day goes on. And so, you know, not every day do I open the book and think, um, I'm going to ponder this today, um, but there's lots of good, you know, food for thought in here. Um, there's some things where you can think about personal history that has deeper meaning for you now that you have the ability for the hindsight to it. Um, I don't officially meditate. Um, I have always found that very difficult. I am somebody who I think is always sleep deprived. And so as a result, if I sit quietly without doing something, I tend to nod off. Um, this has been true since I was in my twenties. So, uh, I don't set aside a time where I just do meditation, but I do find time during the day to think about things. And this is just a nice kind of way to focus your thoughts on a given topic. Um, <clears throat> It kind of follows uh, the course of the year. So there's things about like hearth and home in the winter months, and there's things about enjoying the outdoors in the spring. Um, different, it isn't necessarily things that are themed towards uh, any Celtic celebrations, although there are, there is some of that in here. Um, Anyway, it's an interesting read. If that seems like it might be up your alley, there's that for you. And the other book that I've been reading um, kind of at the beginning of every month, working my way through the chapters, another book my dad gave me, uh, is called Kindling the Celtic Spirit, and it's by Mara Freeman. And this one, I this pushes like all of my history geek buttons because each chapter... Um, is set out with the month of the year. So there's 12 sections. And so for instance, um, January starts off with the welcome of the door. And it talks about, again, hearth and home kind of things. Um, but it goes into the history of primitive Celtic dwellings. Um, it talks about some of the archeological finds uh, it talks about traditions that have been carried down. The book centers mostly on um, Ireland and the British Isles. Uh, there's some reference to European Celtic traditions, uh, meaning the continent, European continent, but mostly, mostly Ireland and the British Isles. Um, and it's got some fun things like uh, the one, the chapter that I've just finished reading is about the summer as you might guess, and Midsummer and the fairies and fairy rings and the tradition of fairy rings and what that meant. And uh, there's little tidbits, like there's little recipes, like this one for watercress soup that are seasonally themed uh, with helpful little 20th and 21st century notes like unless you have proof of the purity of the stream you should be careful about gathering wild watercress these days because of pollution to be safe buy your watercress from a store okay 
that's good advice, right? Um, so anyway, there's there's little poems, there's um, fairy tales and myths, uh, things that are all kind of wrapped up in the Celtic history. And so I've really been enjoying working my way through this book as the years unfolded. Um, and again, it's not a book that I'm reading straight through. I'm doing kind of each chapter as each month occurs as the year unfolds. So if that also sounds like that might be up your alley, there is another recommendation for you. <clears throat> I do a fair amount of reading, so uh, just tucking that tucking that in there along with my other things that I read m more regularly, like you know regular books, um, cover to cover. Uh, so let's see what I am working on now. I have moved on to my Lakeside Needle Crafts Under the Sea Sal. The June Clue came out on the 2nd, and so I got started on that. This is where I am with that. Excuse the hanging threads because I'm kind of in the middle of working on it. So the June Clue are these little guys right here, the jellyfish and the little um, starfish. This is not finished. I'm in the process of it. Hoping today to finish up the cross stitch part of this and then I can go on and do back stitching and get that clue and the month finished up. Um, I love the way that the DMC light effects uh, sparkly thread shows up in real life. I don't think it's really showing on the camera. But wow, it is a pain in the neck to work with. Uh, it was a pain in the neck to work with for like these little stripes in the fish. It's a huge pain to do this much stitching with. Um, no one should look too closely at this because I know there are mistakes in here and there is no way, there is no way I'm ripping the, that out. No, not doing it. So that's where I am with that. Gonna keep working on it till I'm done the clue and then move on. Okay, so that's where I am with that. Um, I did want to share with you guys since I finished up the first new start that I did for the ivory needle challenge. Uh, I have another new start that I can kind of put in to work on this year. I have to come clean and say I think I misinterpreted the description of what we were going to do where we don't need to start two or three new projects every month. It was to start a new pro two or three new projects in June and work on those through the rest of the year. That I can do. Um, so shifting a little bit. Uh, in terms of what I'm going to do as a new start, rather than doing a small thing, I'm going to pick something slightly larger so I have that to work on as the year goes by. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if y'all follow, get the newsletter from Heaven and Earth Designs, but they had a flash sale this week. And so I had some credit stored up from the Stitch From Stash Part A. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to, everything was 50% off. I didn't, you didn't know how long the sale was going to last, so I jumped on in there and I decided I was going to grab two things that I kind of had my eye on. Now, the first one, I'm not starting. I just am showing you guys that I picked it up, but here it is. It is Amy Stewart's Sleeping Beauty. No idea when I'm going to start that. It's massive. There's eight gazillion colors in it. Um, it's 25 by 32 and a half. Uh, stitched one over one on 25 count and has 90 colors in it. But I love it. I love it so, so much. I love everything about this. I love the spinning wheel here. I love the raven, the colors. Love it. Love it. Okay, so I picked that up. Just, you'll see that at some point. <clears throat> The other thing I picked up that I had kind of had my eye on for a while that I am going to start is this design called Shoot the Moon. It is a mini. The artist is Anne Seed, the Anne Seed, excuse me, obviously charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. And I picked this one up. This is without a background. So while, while normally this would be a full coverage piece, 
it's actually more like a silhouette piece. Now, the chart calls for all of the what looks like black to be done in three different colors. Black, navy blue, I think there's a dark purple, and maybe a dark gray. But I'm not going to do multiple colors. I'm just going to do the whole chart in black. And um, since there's no background, all those pretty purple like nighttime colors, I had been looking for a piece that I could use um, as an excuse to work on a dip dye gradient dye colorway to put on fabric. And so that seemed like, I mean, that that is just made for it, right? It's, it is how it is. Now, I did decide that I wanted to go I want the dark to be more at the bottom, I think, rather than the, the lighter colors here. So here is what I dyed. Um, this is a 28 count even weave, uh, Lugana. And I have done it with a gradient dye from kind of a dark blurple there at the bottom edge up through a mid-range purple and then a lighter purple. So I am going to start on that. This is not a huge project. If you have interest in doing a full coverage piece, this is actually not a bad one to pick. Um, it's 243 stitches by 304 stitches. And so on 25 count, it would be 9 and 5 eighths by 12 and an eighth. But on 28 count, which is what I've got, it basically comes out to eight and a half by 11. It's basically the size of a sheet of paper. That seems doable, right? Especially because it's not full coverage. So I am excited to get going on that. Um, my plan is to work it one over one. I'm gonna see whether or not I get enough coverage with the black with that. Um, but that is gonna go onto um, my list to work on this month. I'll probably try to sneak it in for a couple of days, um, maybe work on two things at once, um, work on a work in progress and work on this like half an hour each or something, something like that, just to get this started. Um, Cause I'm really excited about that. I love those colors. I am anxious to see how this looks stitched up on them. Uh, I think it's gonna be kind of a fun adventure. Uh, I haven't done a project that utilizes the dye color of the fabric quite as much. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to, um, give that a, give that a whirl, expand my horizons like I like to do. Uh, so I think that's everything for this update. I will check back in with you guys. Um, once we're about halfway through the month, um, looking at this, it looks like it's going to be about 18 minute clips. So, by the time I morph this and another one together, I think that's going to be it for me for the first half of the month. And I think I will split my progress videos into two. Um, and that just makes better sense to me and try to keep it in off that like hour and a half length because I have trouble watching those videos, even though I love them. Um, yeah, I don't know if you all saw the ones that Tracy P uh, filmed where she was going through her fabric and her... Um, project stash, like kidding stuff up. I loved watching those, but it took me like a week <laughs> to do it in like 15 minute bursts. So I'm going to try to keep mine a little bit shorter. So, you know, if you love watching me and you're that crazy and you want to just like sit and binge watch, you can save them up. Otherwise try to keep it in, you know, half hour or less. So anyway, um, thanks for tuning in guys. I will talk to you here again in another five or six days. Take care. Hey guys, this is Anne and I'm checking back in for kind of a middle of the month June update. Today is Monday, the 12th of June. I hope you guys are doing well. This is take three to attempt to get this to record and be workable and just work. <laughs> so, um, Hopefully I will not be too rambly. I'm trying to like remember what I've said, not said, just get this done. Anyway, things here are good. Um, we are 
definitely in our June hot streak. We usually have our hottest month in June. And uh, it's been in the 90s most days here during the day, but still nice and cool in the evenings, which makes all the difference in the world. Uh, I've been taking the younger dog out for a walk in the mornings about 530 where it's still nice and cool. Um, in the 50s, I made the mistake of just being, just, oh, I'll have a short sleeve t-shirt on. We went out one morning, my hands got so cold. Uh, the next Next morning, I just, I was like, you know, I'm going to wear a little fleece jacket and pull that down, keep my fingers warm while we're walking. So we've been enjoying that. And that's been, um, you know, good to get out and do something active because normally in the heat, I'm kind of in full vampire mode, you know, stay in the house, have the windows closed, shades drawn, air conditioner on, not let the sun touch your skin look. Okay, so let's talk about stitching, which is why you all are here. I have finished the June Clue for the Under the Sea Stitch Along from Lakeside Needle Crafts. This is being done on their 25 count even weave. Oops, sorry, July, the June Clue was the little starfish and those jellyfish right there and that little fish. So there is a close-up of that. I finished um, putting the little beads, which I think you can kind of see there. Oh, you can see the DMC light effects in the tendrils on these guys just about did me in. They were a huge pain in the neck to stitch, really futzy, and yeah not loving that particular thread but it is done it is done and so now we just have next month the July clue which I think will go there I am stitching this one over one as opposed to the one over two or two over two suggested in the pattern using DMC on this um, I am switching out the little water bubbles I think you can see them there I've got them as beads and not as just the B5200. And for the seaweed, I'm adding a blending filament thread to the called for color array to do those. So. so that is finished for this month. Um, <clears throat> uh, the next thing that I had that I worked on. Um, I have no space to put stuff here. I don't want that there. All right. I had an extra day because I finished up the Under the Sea Sal a day early. So because I had finished the little summer solstice ornament I showed you in my last video clip, I needed to start something new for the Ivory Needle Challenge. And I picked this. This is a pattern from Heaven and Earth Designs with artwork by Lee Ann Seed. It's the mini version of Shoot the Moon with no background. So the chart basically is the silhouette. And the way that this is charted, it is charted with five colors, uh, all dark colors. So there's, I think, black, dark gray, dark blue, dark purple, something else. But I'm just doing it all in black. And I'm doing it um, one over one on 28 count even weave, which I dyed myself. So because there's no background on this, the only thing that you're stitching are the motifs that you see there in those dark colors. None of the like shaded purpley background is being stitched. So I'm using this as an excuse to stitch this on a hand dyed fabric that I dyed myself. That's a purple gradient. So it goes from a very, very pale lavender down through a brighter, brighter purple. Let's see if you can see it better that way. And then darker purple at the bottom. So this piece will wind up coming to about there when it's all said and done. It's about the size of a normal paper, 
per sheet, eight and a half by 11, a four, I think maybe that's what it's called. Um, anyway, so that's as far as I've gotten, I've started in the upper left-hand corner right there. And that is my progress so far. Again, one over one, 28 count even weave. Now I won't get back to this again until July, but it is started. And you know, for heaven and earth sign moves along pretty quick because it's not full coverage. Um, it's a fair amount of stitching still, but not quite at the same, same level. Um, when I was going through and deciding what I was going to start next for my new start for the challenge, I realized how many heaven and earth designs I have that I would really love to do. And, um, I'm sure a lot of you already watch, um, Sarah over at stitch and mommy, her podcast. I think she has like 20 on the go or maybe it's 19 cause she just finished. She just finished a really cute one of two penguins. Um, if you don't watch her, go and check her out. She, uh, she has a ton of really fun, really great projects she's working on. And obviously a ton of full coverage. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah, 20, 19, something like that, that you have started. Um, mostly heaven and earth and golden kite, I think are the two companies that she tends to get her patterns from. I have so many heaven and earth designs, you guys. I, so I have five currently going. If you count this, this one, your choice, whether you think it's a real heaven and earth design or not. But at any rate, I've got that one. I've got the star weaver story keep. I've got, uh, decorating the wreath. I've got the new one, the, um, winter's encounter. That is the Laura Prindle piece of the horse that I just started for stitch mania. And I have Amy Stewart's a stitching shelf that has been on hold, but I'm itching to get back to it. So I was toying with the idea of doing something like a full coverage focus for 2018. And I'm not sure how it's going to work. I want to think a little bit about the concept because I don't think I could just do full coverage for an entire year. I think, I think that would burn me out. And so I'm toying with the concept of how I want it to work, whether it's maybe two weeks a month or I don't know. I don't know. If y'all have any thoughts on it, give me a shout. Leave me a note in the comments. Um, if you want to participate in that, let me know. It might be kind of fun. We could do a little sort of stitch along where you picked whatever you wanted to work on, but as long as it was full coverage, maybe. Um, what I do from all the full coverage. So I like to work off my tablet. So I don't print the whole pattern. I just print the first page. So for heaven and earth, which is what I tend towards, um, it gives you the stitching, um, the size, the number of stitches, you know, vertically and horizontally and the art information and then a picture. And the pictures aren't always huge. Some are bigger than others, but you know, it's enough that I can remember, oh yeah, that's the one that looks like da 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 in case, I mean, this one is Amy Stewart's Sleeping Beauty. That is not hard to remember what that looks like, but some of the other ones, I just, it helps to jog my memory. Um, so I have a notebook of all of those printed out and it is about, It's like this money. Single, these are single sheets. There's a whole lot of them. I want to do them all. I want to start them all. Um, if y'all have interest in seeing what is lurking in here, let me know. I'll be glad to do kind of like a, a quick flip through just so you can see what I have in mind. Um, anyway, I'm going to think on that going forward for 2018, decide what I want to do. But I do, I do know that I want to kind of focus on some of those pieces and how I do that. The devil's in the details as always, but we'll see. Um, I'm sure there'll be some kind of a rotation thing and some of it will depend on what I get finished this, this year in 2017. 
I know there'll be several of those that will not get finished this year, but you know, whatever. Anyway, just a thought. So the next thing on the docket for me, which will run me for the next six days is um, a work in progress. And this one is full moon from the John thread. And I am doing the round, the one there. That's the pin cushion. I love this little pattern. It's it's mostly cross stitch, but um, it like most of the John threads, it has some specialty threads in there. So like those little yellow blossoms are done with a specialty stitch. Can't remember what those are. What are they? Um, oh. Um. Ba -dum -ba -dum. They're Leviathan stitches. And then the little um, spider right there is a little black bead, which you probably can't tell from that photo, but it is. So I am working this one over two on a 32 count hand dyed linen that I dyed for the shop called Chickadee. It's just a kind of mottled gray. Get something behind that. So for Stitch Mania, which is when I started this, I got the moon finished. And the moon is a just sort of kind of buttermilk yellow color. It's a Krynex silk. And then I'm going to do the rest of the, the stitches in color and cotton. Hand dyed floss. So that's what I'm going to work on this week. I will have that to work on for um, Dark 13 stitching tomorrow. And I'm hoping I can get this finished um, over those six days. I don't, I don't think there's a reason I couldn't, but hey, you never know. Life knocking on the door. So that's what's on deck for the next six days. Um, like I said, hoping to have that finished up over that time. So maybe I will have that to report in for my kind of end of the month things. Uh, the rest of the stuff I wanted to show you was I got um, my Color and Cotton June Club Floss Club Floss in the mail this weekend. And I think Angela said that she was inspired by Game of Thrones for this month's colorways, but regardless, they're gorgeous. Um, she sent Winter Wheat. She sent Pebble. I love this as a neutral. This is kind of brownish, grayish, but it has a little bit of um, almost a purple tone to it. I really like that one. <clears throat> there is Oxblood. There is Night Lands, which is the um, hand paint variegated one for this go round that kind of has pe that pebble color in it, that taupe gray, brown, purple color. And then it has like rusty, rusty brown terracotta in it. I really like that color. I think that's a gorgeous colorway. Um, and then finally, my favorite out of the group is called King's Blue which happens to match my nails, although I did not plan that. So, you know, go me. I like this because it's sort of turquoise, but it's not. It's got some gray to it. I really like that color. I think I may have to order uh, some more of this for my Death by Cross Stitch that I'm doing all in blues. That color just speaks to me. <clears throat> so those came. Um, I will link to Angela's shop. She has other colors you can buy a la carte um, that aren't, you don't have to get the monthly club, but it is fun because you get an awesome set of colorways once a month. Um, and I think, of, I think are very, very reasonably priced for what you are getting. So if you haven't seen her, and I'm sure you probably have, um, lots of folks on FlossTube have signed up for her club. Toddle on over there, check her out. 
Um, Angela does have a couple of floss tube videos, but she's crazy busy with job and the dog boys, Frankie and Scooby. Hi. Hi guys. If you're watching. Um, last but not least, I wanted to just make you all aware of a product that I enjoy. And I think some of you may as well. I know there's lots of folks who like the, um, Nora Corbett, Mirabilia, the fairies, the um, mermaids, kind of fantasy things. There is a magazine called Fairy Magazine, which I subscribe to. This is their summer issue that just came. It's a quarterly magazine. I don't think it's available as an e-zine. I think you have to order the print, but the print is gorgeous. It's a really nice quality paper, and it is eye candy. Um, as you might guess by the name, it is a magazine that is themed on fairy tales and myths and magical creatures and all kinds of things like that. And they do a really, really good job with their photography. Um, every issue usually has kind of a high level photo shoot. This month is Midsummer Night's Dream. And so. They did an article about the woman who makes these dresses as well as the wings Oops, right here. They're two separate designers. So there's multiple pages of those gorgeous things. And that's also the cover shoot. Um, it is kind of an eclectic mix of things. Um, they usually do a set of recipes. So this month, or this issue is all berry themed. There's a crumble, there's this salad, there's um, another one that has pasta and blueberries in it that looks wonderful. <clears throat> they usually do um, an article that's on um, some fairy tale or something to do with um, ancient tales, ancient legends, things like that. This month's is fairy lore in Wuthering Heights. So this was a really interesting article because I mean, I've read Wuthering Heights, but there was a lot of references in it to the sort of, um, tales, I guess, or little mentions of things. Um, ghosts and changelings and things like that. So that was a really good article I enjoyed. They usually do a short um, one page fairy tale that's a new, a brand new story um, written by Alice Hoffman, who if you don't recognize her name, she is the author of Practical Magic. And for those of you who like that, and I know there's a lot of you who really enjoy that movie, um, her new novel, The Rules of Magic, which is a prequel to Practical Magic, is going to be out this fall in October. And so she usually does like a one-page story, and then her daughter Lisa has a knitwear design that is themed to the story. So there's the pattern for that in the back of the magazine. Um, they usually do a an article that's on ephemera, or um, sort of turn of the century prints that are also themed with whatever the magazine's themed about. Um, they had one on trolls this past year. This one's obviously on fairies. It's got some advertisements from the 20s and 30s. <clears throat> the there's also my favorite article in this one is about the Jan Nibs Design Studio. She does custom dresses or that you can order like this one. Very Baroque, uh, Rococo feel to this. It's got kind of a faux stomacher. It's got uh, ribbon roses. It's got more embroidery here that's got beads. It's got this set of ruched ribbon with the pearls. It's got the embroidered lace at the neckline. I love this piece, everything. Gosh, the colors are so gorgeous. And you know, the workmanship in this is insane. It's just beautiful. Um, 
I've been toying with doing the 20 things you didn't know about me meme that's out and about. Um, we'll see if I pull that together. But one of the things that you probably don't know about me is that I used to work for two museums back on the East Coast, one of which is Colonial Williamsburg and the other of which is a small social history museum called the Valentine, which is in Richmond, Virginia, um, in the historic textile and clothing department. All kinds of amazing things in those repositories. And I, I've had the chance to actually go through the Smithsonian's clothing collection. Um, we went up for a the Smithsonian was borrowing a piece that the Valentine owned, and so we took the dress up to the Smithsonian for them um, to put on exhibit. And so we had a amazing behind-the-scenes tour of the holdings at the Smithsonian, which is there. They have beautiful pieces that never even see the light of day. So anyway, sidebar. I may get to that at some point. <laughs> hold that. Hold that thought. Um, they also usually try in the magazine, they try to do a section that is non-Western European themed um, that supports whatever the theme of the magazine is. So in this one, they have one called an article from the sky to the cemetery to the sea that's um, mythical beings from Hindu and Buddhist lore. So that's kind of nice that they usually try to balance the Western and Eastern things, although it is it tends to be more... Um, Western, um, oh, excuse me, we've got doggy dreams happening over there. Lizzie, Lizzie, Lizzie. Um, they usually have um, new poems or small essays that they do with some kind of gorgeous artwork behind either photography or or artwork of some other kind. They have an article in this that's kind of a travelogue about Cornwall, the British coast of Cornwall, and the history of pixies there. So gorgeous photos. Um, like I said, kind of an eclectic mix. This one also has a pattern if you want to make your own sort of butterfly wings, fairy wings. Just saying. Um, so uh, I will put a link to their site down below, no affiliation, you know, whatever. Just something I really enjoy. I kind of wandered into this. I have a friend who shot some photos for them, and um, she does amazing photography. And so I got kind of hooked on the eye candy that this magazine is. They've done other issues um, this past year. They've done uh, one on Warrior Queens. They've done um, one on... The snow princess concept last year for their fall issue they did one on like goblins and then good pixies kind of the yin yang of those so they had one cover that was the like the good witch and one cover that was the bad witch and then the, the um, issue was split in half um, it was just kind of that was a really you know, fun visual concepts. So anyway, if you think you might like that, you may care to check that out. If not, you know, no harm, no foul, but I have made y'all aware. Uh, so I think that is it today. Hopefully third time is a charm and I can get this actually recorded and actually uploaded and put all the show notes down in the down bar below. I think that's it for today. I will check back in. Um, I am going to try to continue this vlog format. This is, works so much easier for me, you know, assuming things actually record. Um, and so I will be back to do that over the second half of the month of June, as well as kind of a June plans or July plans, June sum up at the end of the month. Um, and hopefully then we'll also have a chance to get y'all to help me pick the Chatelaine to start in July since that is my birthday month and I have two that I can't really pick from and I'm going to let y'all decide which which I which I start. So until the next time I talk to you, um, be kind to yourself, be good to others. Talk to you later.